some people are joining now and uh, uh, it's great to be here. Um, I'm James Hughes and I am the Minister Councillor for Economic Affairs at the British Embassy in Warsaw and uh, I was supposed to be on at 11.40 um, and the first thing I was going to say in my speech um, was how wonderful it was that technology is able to bring us all together um, given the situation in which we find ourselves. But um, uh, unfortunately, the technology did not work uh, for about an hour or so. Um, so uh, I have now been reconnected. Uh, and here I am. And so it is great, finally, uh, after an hour to be here um, to uh, talk to you uh, with the Wall Summit for the second time. Um, uh, it's my second go here with you. And I'd just like to um, pay tribute to the organizers um, First, for their incredible patience uh, at getting me online um, after an hour of messing around with different bits of kit, um, and also for moving this um, uh, whole event online. And I think it's a testament to the power of technology that we're able to do that given the circumstances uh, in which we're operating. Um, my session today is about going global with the UK. Um, I talked about this subject uh, at the last World Summit. Um, I plan to say slightly different things this time, though, um, because otherwise you and I will get quite bored. Um, so um, uh, I hope you find what I'm going to say useful. Um, you'll be aware that increasingly Polish tech and IT companies are choosing the UK uh, as their first step in global expansion, using the UK as a springboard for further global growth. Um, this is especially the case, for example, in fintech. Uh, it's a sector where we've seen a doubling of investment in the UK in one year alone. Um, examples include Coin Firm, um, which is now a global leader in RegTech for digital currencies and blockchain, and Marta Krupinska, uh, who chose London to co-found her successful money transfer startup, Azimul, um, and has now been hired as head of Google for Startups UK uh, in their Shoreditch hub in East London. That's great to see, and that's exactly what the embassy are here to help with. Um, our Department for International Trade team our embassy team, as Ambassador Jonathan Knott said in the opening ceremony this morning. And we want to continue to support that process even further. Um, of course, all of this is in the context of business as usual. Um, clearly, though, we are not operating in a business as usual context at the moment. We're all adjusting to the new reality that the COVID-19 pandemic uh, requires. Um, but as we can see with the initiative today, my technology crumbles aside. Um, the tech sector continues to lead the way uh, in providing innovative solutions to some wicked problems. Uh, and we can see examples already in the COVID-19 space of how UK and Polish companies are working to address some of those solutions that we need now. But going back to business as usual, uh, let me uh, go through some headlines. Um, uh, uh, the, the first headline, of course, is that the UK remains Europe's number one tech nation. Um, the UK is the third in the world for tech unicorns uh, behind the United States and China. Um, we have 77 companies in the UK valued at over a billion dollars. Um, and the number of future unicorns in the UK rose by over a quarter in the last year alone. And fueled by increasing levels of tech investment, um, our tech sector in the UK is growing six times faster than that in the wider, than the, the wider British economy generally. Um, and investment in tech grew to a record 10 billion pounds last year, as the ambassador said. 9% of every of all people in the UK who are employed are currently employed in the tech sector. And the British government is determined to keep it that way. Um, and so we're investing heavily in education, infrastructure, uh, technology, leveling, leveling up across the regions in the UK. You will hear our Prime Minister and our Ministers talking a lot about leveling up across the regions and the nations of the UK, as well as doubling investment in basic science and research, as was announced by our Finance Minister earlier this month. Um, our commitment to leveling up across the regions builds on an already strong base. Uh, it goes without saying, I don't need to say this, that London is head and shoulders above the next closest European city for tech investment. Um, uh, almost a quarter of the total investment made um, in tech um, in the whole of Europe is in London. And most of this investment is channeled towards AI development, uh, and that contributes to the UK's position as third globally for AI investment. 
But it's not just London in the UK. We have, as the ambassador alluded to this morning, uh, Bristol, uh, Cambridge, Edinburgh, Manchester, Oxford, all of these cities also are in the top 20 European cities for tech investment. Manchester in particular, uh, in the north of England, is Europe's fastest growing major tech cluster with investment growing um, by 133 million pounds last year alone. And 45%, so nearly half of the UK startups are based outside London. Um, and that's a positive sign for us in the UK because it shows that all nations and regions in the UK are building that pipeline of global tech leaders and global tech talent. And the British government and British society continues to provide unparalleled support for young startups that need access to abundant, patient capital and world leading talent in areas of cutting edge research. And we now have more than 205 incubators, 163 accelerators, 11 pre-accelerators, seven virtual accelerators and four virtual incubators active in the UK. Um, and our activity and our support that we're providing, whether that's um, through the FCOs and Department for International Trade uh, Overseas Network or through the uh, sector deals and the activity that we are pushing through in the UK is underpinned by five policy principles. And that's what I wanted to, to also talk about in my session today. Um, our first principle is that what government does should be pro-tech. Um, I've already said that digital innovation is a major driver of opportunity in our economy and in our society. And we see it day in, day out. And we are committed to sustaining, intensifying and spreading this growth. As we expand our trading relationships around the world, um, we are passionate about the opportunities provided by uh, digital and tech, and they remain at the heart of the government's trade policy in the years ahead. The second principle uh, of five is that we should share the benefits of technology widely and fairly uh, across society. Um, I've talked about the different regions and nations of the UK and, and the fact we have at least six cities in the top 20 in Europe for tech investment. We're also committed to ensuring competitive digital markets so that companies with new offers and new services can compete fairly uh, and consumers can get better products and content. Cheaper prices, of course, it helps in terms of um, uh, the bottom line and greater choice and transparency in doing so. So we're focusing on improving digital and our capability and our offer across the country. We're also pr uh, promoting within the UK greater diversity in tech. Um, in order to ensure that greater diversity of thought is permeating through the sector. The third principle is that we should have a regulatory regime that is pro-innovation and unashamedly so, uh, creating a joined up approach to regulate and govern digital and tech, working across industries, working across sectors to make sure that we have a system that works for you. Um, and the UK's historic strength in financial services combined with world leading policy and regulation in the space, such as open banking, uh, such as in uh, the UK Financial Conduct Authority's um, FinTech Sandbox. Um, these things have contributed to building a world renowned FinTech powerhouse in the UK. And another example, uh, as we look towards the UK's hosting of COP26, the global climate change talks in November this year and our presidency that will last into 2021, we can see the clean tech companies in the UK who are working to reduce the negative aspects of the environment um, have attracted almost three quarters more venture capital investment in a single year, um, fueled by the willingness of the UK, the UK government, UK business and UK society to support the sector grow uh, in order to achieve, in our case, a uh, world leading legal commitment to achieve net zero carbon emissions by at least 2050. The fourth policy principle is that we want to protect the vulnerable uh, and ensure safety and security. If we can't be confident that digital tech is safe and secure, then we lose the trust that it is the lifeblood of any digital economy and the lifeblood of the economy more generally. Um, and so we discourage um, the uh, adoption um, of um, uh, uh, regulation that stymies this and encourage the adoption of new tech uh, that's vital to unleash our potential. The government recently published an online harms white paper 
It's available on our UK government portal, which is gov.uk. And that uh, sets out plans for a new statutory duty of care for the tech sector, overseen by an independent regulator. And the UK already has very high standards, for example, in data protection. Um, indeed, we've implemented the EU's GDPR regulation. Um, and on that note, we continue to recognise the benefit to both the EU and the UK, despite the UK's departure from the European Union, that the European Commission finalises the process of recognising the so-called adequacy of the UK's data protection framework as soon as possible. And our fifth policy principle is for a free and open internet. And we want to continue to be a global champion of the so-called multi-stakeholder model of internet governance, um, which have, in which a variety of actors um, play important roles on how the internet itself is run and managed and governed. Um, it is not for governments to be managing the internet. It is for multi-stakeholder approach to continue. And we continue to champion that uh, with our partners around the world. So all of these policy principles, uh, as well as the practical support that we're putting into place, um, continue to help the UK keep its position uh, at the top of the tree and as an unapologetic champion for the tech sector and for the potential that the tech sector can play in our societies and our economies. Investors from around the world see this too. Uh, nearly half of all tech investments in the UK uh, came from US and Asian investors last year alone. Uh, so the UK remains a prime springboard, uh, a platform for Polish companies, a platform for Polish entrepreneurs seeking to grow their business and jump from the UK to global markets. Uh, at this point, I could give you a load of statistics and a load of facts, um, but the, 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 I think the position of the UK um, as the centre uh, for Europe, uh, the European technology sector, it, it speaks for itself. 90% um, of global GDP uh, sits within uh, within office hours of London um, and the ability to set up a business in the UK is incredibly easy and has been for some time requiring just one pound of capital to set up a business and from there you will have access to practical talent and expertise a large pool of investment for scaling up both in terms of UK and international investors access to big British and global corporations looking to buy new solutions for the challenges they're facing and with UK government support. As I said at the last fall summit when I made a similar um, uh, speech, um, we, as far as we're concerned, if a business sets up in the UK, you are to all intents and purposes then a British business and you will have our support and our Department for International Trade's support to help you go global. Um, as the Ambassador said earlier, um, with the Polish Ministry of Economic Development, we have recently launched the UK Poland Tech Challenge, which is designed precisely to give Polish and British startups the chance to pitch their solutions to big corporates in the other countries. So Polish startups are pitching to UK corporates and vice versa. Um, for us, that's a, a great opportunity to give access to British tech talent um, uh, that can assess the needs and potential for Polish corporations uh, to digitize and use big data and to use their hands-on experience to help deliver it on the ground. So that's the sales pitch for the UK that I wanted to make. Um, uh, we remain on hand at the British Embassy in Warsaw and with our partners in our global network around the world to support you in using the UK as a platform for global growth and to build up collaboration between our sector and your sector. I'm conscious that uh, I've been on for nearly my allotted time despite the hours delay. Um, but before I finish, I just want to say a word or two also about the other direction in this. This is about going, going global with the UK, but I want to just talk about how we uh, in the British government and British business are increasingly seized of the potential in Poland and across Central Europe, um, but Poland in particular, uh, for collaboration in the tech sector. We're seeing increasing interest from UK investors seeking new opportunities in Poland. And government and business alike sees that the IT sector in Poland employs over a quarter of a million developers, and that has doubled in a decade. We're seeing that trajectory continue to grow. And British business is voting with their feet, and they're increasing their footprint in Poland to take advantage of the tech talent and the potential that we see. And a survey condu uh, conducted among some British businesses operating in Poland recently found that nearly two thirds 
of those polled want to increase their headcounts over the next five years, working with the tech talent that we see in this country. And 73%, so almost three quarters, are set to raise their investment spending in this country as a testament to that tech talent that they see. Direct investment from the UK adds about 15 billion Polish water um, to Poland's GDP, um, which is about three billion pounds, uh, give or take. Um, and that's attributable to the inflow of knowledge, technology and capital. So despite the challenges that we face today, um, both in COVID-19 and in my case, trying to get onto this website in order to talk to you, um, we remain confident and optimistic that the tech partnership that we have between the UK and Poland will go from strength to strength in the years to come. It is one of the prime partnerships that we have at government level between the UK and Poland. It features in our prime minister-led intergovernmental consultations because we recognize the potential uh, to grow and nurture that collaboration between the UK and Poland in the years ahead. And um, I hope um, that you'll be able to work with us uh, and call on us if we can be of any assistance in terms of uh, helping you to grow uh, your projects, your initiatives, your ideas, your creativity, and to use the UK to go global. Thanks very much for your time.